on September the 8th, 1974, he forgave President Nixon. By law, President Ford could do that. He could pardon anyone in politics, anyone, you know, a regular person who's in prison, he can pardon that. Legally, that's what the president can do. So President Ford pardoned Nixon. And the people became so upset. The people did not feel that it was right for President Ford to pardon Nixon. He had lied. He had covered up. And it really had caused turmoil. But he stayed firm and pardoned President Nixon. And then going forward, when he ran for president again, he lost. Before, he had a huge approval from the people, and they liked him. They highly regarded him. Regarded him, Like he had the popular um, vote, or was about 70, 75%, and then he fell to 50% or below. So he never got enough votes to become president again. So going forward, people, did they, you know, the good things about President Ford kind of passed away. President Ford, people would say, who is that? I have no idea. You know, now young people maybe don't even know who he is at all. He's not a famous president. He kind of lost that because of the way he pardoned Nixon. So later, I'm trying to remember, the people, okay, wait a minute, now I'm remembering. So, you know, in history, you know, political history, you know, they realized that he was right by Potter and Harding Nixon. And that was the best thing he could have done. Because if he had not pardoned Nixon, it would have continued on a huge entangling mess and debate that would have hurt this nation. So he tried to remove that from discussion and get it behind us. Now what he said, hoping that what he said would remind us too how we feel about our sins and how we feel guilty and awkward but we already know that God has forgiven our sins and we will talk about how God miraculously pardons us from our sins so for this is what he said he says theirs talking about Nixon's family is an American tragedy and today you know, the word is maybe translated as a disaster. Trump, you know, uses that. A tra tragedy in all we have played a part of. You know, the accusation, the disappointments, all the problems. You know, we think that it all came from Nixon. So it could go on and on and on and on you know that it would never go away or someone must write the end of it so I have concluded that only I can do that and if I can I must so that's what he was trying to do when he pardoned Nixon he also said, my conscience, you know, between right and wrong, that's what our conscience tells us, that only I, as president, had the constitutional power to firmly shut and seal this book. Meaning what? Meaning this part of our history. You know, we keep trying to revisit it. You know, we keep turning the pages over and over again. But we needed to close it and seal it and throw it away and have it be over. That's what he was talking about. So I do believe that the buck stops talking about here. It's finished. That I cannot rely on public opinion, what you think is right or what is wrong, 
I cannot depend on those public opinion polls to tell me what is right. But people still were upset, thought it was not right. They quarreled, talked about how wrong Nixon was and how he should have been punished. It was tremendous. So Nixon and his family really suffered. Even though President Ford pardoned Nixon, and it was a big relief for Nixon himself, because if he had not been pardoned, maybe he could have been murdered in prison. Yeah, that's true, but he could have been murdered anywhere. But, he, but President Ford pardoned him so that he could stay home with his family and that the country itself could move on. But Nixon's family still suffered from all the guilt of what had been done. So President Ford... He felt that it was the right thing to do to pardon Nixon, to put it in the past, and he thought it would be best for the nation. But after the pardon, you know, Congress had to call a meeting, you know, everybody questioning President Ford, and he kept answering and trying to explain. You know, people <laughs> opposed and disagreed with Ford, and few, very few supported him. But later... John Kennedy gave him an award, talking about President Ford later, you know, because they realized how right he was for pardoning, pardoning Nixon. President Ford, you know, what he knew that it was the right thing to do, he had words in the back of his pocket for a long time to help him remember that these was the right things and the right reasons but he never shared what that piece of paper said until 20 years later when somebody interviewed him when President Ford was interviewed this is what he said it says a pardon and I'm going to explain this a pardon carried an amputation of guilt and that acceptance carried a confession of guilt what does that mean it says as president ford pardoned that means it was very clear that he was guilty meaning nixon amputation i mean it was like almost transferred you know they gave it to him that it symbolized that he was guilty, that Nixon was guilty, and he accepted the pardon. Obviously stated that Nixon was guilty. Um, no, let me explain. So if I accept, it's obviously that Nixon accepted the pardon. He confessed that he was guilt. No, we're not talking about Jesus. I explain this difference. Pardon. God pardons different than this. And I'll explain the difference here in a minute. But when President Ford gave him the pardon and Nixon accepted it, it was a, conf and a confession of guilt. You know, he didn't have to sit there and say, yes, I did this. Yes, I did that. He didn't have to. Because when he accepted it, it showed that he was guilty. And he knew that he was. And the people knew that Nixon. And then they let it you know, tried to get over it at that point. So where did he get this wording? You know, when he thought about this, it was from a court statement a long time ago in the 1915s. It was a story about what happened. This is not a history class, so I don't want you to have to think you have to remember all these dates or everything, but this was a quote stated in a court trial in the 1915s, and he it helped him remember and here, so it's interesting here in Isaiah 55, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. His thoughts, God's thinking is not the same as ours. 
That's what it's talking about. The point here is about grace and mercy and forgiveness of sin. That's what this is talking about in the scripture. So the people that know this verse, they don't realize that it's talking about the forgiveness and the grace. You know, same as President Ford. You know, when he pardoned Nixon, people thought he was wrong. Why did you do that? He, why did you try to let him cover up his crimes? So in Isaiah 55, which proceeds, it says, Come, all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, money, remember, from works doing, come and buy and eat. Meaning, go on. You don't have to pay anything. Come and buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Telling them to come on. Take. That's the gospel. Do you believe in the forgiveness of sin and that Jesus has forgiven sin, that there is no cost to accept that? That's what he's saying. Come, buy wine, milk. Milk. He's talking about spiritual food, spiritual blessings. Wow. The charge for grace and forgiveness, forgiven. So in Isaiah 55, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found, and call on him, for he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, he will freely pardon. Freely. Meaning, do you have to forgive? do all these things to receive forgiveness? No. Remember President Ford pardoned Nixon. Remember the conversation he had had, you know, about them going to court? You know, Nixon was concerned about that. You know, maybe Ford you know, told him about resigning and that he would pardon him. But God didn't debate that forgiveness for us. He decided it, period. He spoke it and it was done. So all of our sins are put to the side. Wow. So the point is talking about his thoughts and his are not our thoughts. So it says, remember we were talking about Ford, you know, the note that he was carrying in his pocket for 20 years. It says the pardon carried an amputation of guilt and that the acceptance carried a confession of guilt. It's different than God's forgiveness, though. You know, we come to him and tell him how we have forgiven and we give him our sins and God forgives us and we have no guilt. It's the opposite here. When we ask for forgiveness and we receive our forgiveness of our sins, we should have no guilt. It is freely given. We are free to join in our fellowship with God. We are free to communion and conversate with God. You know, free to receive his blessings that he pours out on us because of Jesus and what he did. Not me and what I do, but for Jesus. All I have to do is confess and he forgives and he shows mercy. Every morning when we wake up and the sun rises and it comes through this window and you think, oh, wow, the new mercies and the new grace that he shines on us every day, every day, that should be a reminder. You know, do we have to count all of our sins that we've done and God counts and keeps track of the sins that we did? No. God, what he did for us, if he is not against us, who can stand against us? So Martin Luther felt very touched by that. He wanted people to understand God's grace through the gospel, that it was through God. And for salvation was only for Jesus and his glory. And that we could praise God for his mercy. That's it. So your sins, you know... Will God show us those when we get to heaven? Nope, they're gone. <coughs> so suppose you can imagine 
But I did all these things. And God will say, what are you talking about? When you sit there and say that what you've done.